Patch 11.11 .11 is out, and I think it's the perfect time to introduce you to some new builds. How's it going, Summoners? Welcome back to our channel. My name is Nathan Ng, and in this video, I'll provide you with some new Korean builds that you can use to get the edge on your opponents. We'll be covering builds for all five roles, so make sure you stay tuned. Finally, hit that sub button as we love bringing you content like this, and your support makes it all possible. Now, let's jump into these builds beginning with the top lane. The first build that we have for top lane is for Karma. I know a lot of top lane mains are kind of groaning knowing that she's making a comeback, but her time was bound to come eventually with the various buffs this season. This build features Karma utilizing a couple of recently buffed items as you'd expect, it's tank Karma top. With the recently buffed Frozen Heart Karma is looking significantly tankier than before. The extra damage reduction adds extra value to the purchase. Nerfs to Thormil didn't really have nearly as adverse of an effect on Karma as opposed to traditional tanks. While Frostfire Gauntlet is a little bit weaker for ranged champions, Karma already has a bunch of crowd control and poke to work with. Instead, the item continues to synergize with their playstyle and provides extra durability. For runes, you'll be running Grasp with Undying, Shield Bash, Bone Plating, Revitalize, Mana Flow Band, Transcendence, Attack Speed, Adaptive Force, and your choice of a defensive rune. Attack Speed can go criminally underrated, and you might even be wondering why you need it. Unfortunately, your main focus of this build is to not be going AP. While you do build some, what's more important is your ability to dominate lane and pick up farm. Attack speed makes trading easier and also assists in your last hitting. Picking up minion kills is equally as important as pulling out the enemies to build the lead. Unfortunately, playing a champion like Karma is a little bit more methodical. You have to take your time and it's not just as simple as running at your opponent expecting to win a fight just because you're stronger. If you want help learning how to play Karma or any other champion, hit up a coach at ProGuides.com as they'd love to help you out. That is one way to get good karma. Be good at karma. The same thing. Anyway, for her items, you want to build Frostfire Gauntlet, Boots of Lucidity, Frozen Heart, Spirit Visage, Chemtech Putrefire, and wrap up the build to either a Staff of Flowing Water or Zanya's Hourglass. With these items, you're not only tanky, but you also provide a ton of utility for your team. Have you ever seen AD LeBlanc top in the past? It was a pretty odd pick, but it definitely worked. I'm here to give you the Season 11 version of it. Well, why does it work? Well, it definitely helps that LeBlanc is ranged. Her abilities don't do that much with this build, but they do activate Spellblade and they can do at least some amount of damage. AD LeBlanc is basically a super mobile marksman, and you can freely use her W and also your ultimate to escape or chase down enemies. You can also use them to get free poke in the late game. Dash in, tag an enemy with a Spellblade crit, dash back. It's pretty oppressive, and while your damage output will without a doubt be lower than a traditional marksman, LeBlanc's safety is unmatched. In lane, LeBlanc is oppressive. Most top laners can't catch her. Then she dashes away, and then when you back off, she can potentially teleport back to her original spot and tag you with another basic attack. For runes, you'll be running Halo Blades, Set an Impact, Eyeball Collection, Ravenous Hunter, Presence of Mind, Alacrity, Attack Speed, Adaptive Force, and your choice of a defensive rune. Halo Blades is incredible with this build. You don't want to expose yourself for too long, and a lot of the times, you just want to jump back after one attack. With Hill of Blades, going for 3 is much more plausible, and it synergizes really well with the Kraken Slayer that you want to build. Also, just make sure to run Presence of Mind as you're playing a middling champion with 80 items, so you'll absolutely run into mana problems without it. For items, build Kraken Slayer, Berserker Screech, Essence Reaver, Infinity Edge, Lord Dominic's Regards, and either Navori Quick Blades or Bloodthirster. Overall, it's a very straightforward crit build that incorporates very little attack speed, and that's where Hill of Blades and Runes come in. That'll be wrapping up our top lane build section, so make sure you go ahead and take a look at the screen for the recap. As you'd expect, we're going to be talking about the junglers next. First in the jungle, we have an off-meta pick with Orn. Orn jungle provides her team with a solid flex pick, but like any other flex pick, it creates uncertainty. This means you could potentially bait the enemy top laner and mislead them into a counter pick attempt. One perk Orn jungle brings is that you don't necessarily have to base. You only base when you're in dire need of health and mana, but since you're perfectly capable of forging items anywhere on the battlefield, this can save you crucial time. If fights over objectives are about to break out, or you just need to hover one of your teammates to protect him with an enemy gank, Orn is your guy. Of course, Orn also scales very well, as he can upgrade his teammates' items later into the game and is a solid initiator at any point past level 6. For runes, you'll be running Predator, Sudden Impact, Eyeball Collection, Ingenious Hunter, Futures Market, and Approach Velocity, as well as with Ability Haze and your choice of two defensive stats. Predator increases your early game jungle pressure. The extra movement speed makes it so much easier to get into Orn's effective range. His Q and E provide plenty of kill setup, but getting in range can be pretty challenging or easily sidestepped at max range. For items, you'll be building Turbo Chem Tank, Defensive Boots, Thornmail, Abyssal Mask or Gargoyle Stone Plate, Warmog's Armor, and Dead Man's Plate. You'll gain plenty of initiating power with this build, and the buffs to Warmog's means that you'll easily gain access to its powerful passive. One pick that I'm super excited to see for this patch is Nautilus. His ease damage received a gigantic buff against jungle monsters, and he's bound to see plenty of play this patch. With increased clear speed, Nautilus can quickly power through the jungle and push for a fast level 6. 
From there, he's actually very similar to Vi. You walk up to the enemy and press R, and then you just kind of watch them die. Pre-level 6, Nautilus is still an incredible ganker. Just like Blitzcrank or Support Nautilus for that matter, you just walk into the lane and if you land the pull, your opponent is almost always dead. Nautilus's pull, auto attack root, and E slow are oppressive, and enemies have little room to escape once they get hit by any of these abilities. I don't know if you guys remember this or if I'm just a boomer, but Nautilus used to be a jungler. Fun fact. For runes, run Aftershock, Shield Bash, Conditioning, Overgrowth, Set an Impact, Ultimate Hunter, Attack Speed, Adaptive Force, and Armor. Next up, you'll be building defensive boots, Frostfire Gauntlet, Dead Man's Plate, Abyssal Mask, Thornmail or Demonic Embrace, and Gargoyle Stone Plate. When choosing between Thornmail and Demonic Embrace, you decide based on your need for healing reduction. Demonic Embrace provides a solid damage increase, but Thornmail will outclass it against comps stacked with healing. Since we're talking about Nautilus, let me ask you guys our question of the day. What champion do you prefer seeing in the jungle? I personally miss the days of the tank junglers. They typically have a lot of crowd control, and I like seeing junglers carry with impactful utility and solid engages. Let me know your answers in the comments down below, and let's move on with the video. And that'll be wrapping up the jungle. Let's take one more look at the screen for the recap of those builds. Next up, let's talk about the mid lane. Our first mid lane build is for Rumble. Rumble mid has consistently outperformed top lane Rumble for quite some time now. The build that we're showing you, however, takes a slightly different approach. You want to use the setup against melee champions. Champions like Yasuo and Zed are ones that like to snowball. Rumble acts to stop these picks in their tracks with this insane burst damage, and let's talk about how. For your runes, you'll be running Hail of Blades, Taste of Blood, Eyeball Collection, Ravenous Hunter, Nimbus Cloak, Scorch, Double Adaptive Force, and your choice of a defensive rune. The Hail of Blades is there for those all-ins. If you're at a point where you're just basic attacking your opponent, you're often about to overheat or already overheated. Halo Blades allows you to quickly smack your opponents for some insane damage, leading to easy wins in most duels. For your items, build Night Harvester, Sorcerer's Shoes, Zanya's Hourglass, Morella Namakon, Demonic Embrace, and Avoid Staff. Our next mid lane build is for Trindamir. Trindamir is yet another great pick into many melee champions. He simply outduels a bunch of them. He sports the highest base 80 in the game, and this is further set in stone with the bonus that he gets from his Q. After level 6, Trindamir's ultimate ability also makes him an insane counter to several mid lane assassins. The fact that he literally cannot die makes it so difficult for many assassins to deal with him, especially when he decides to go aggressively dash forward and go for that all in. For runes, run Fleet Footwork, Triumph, Legend Tenacity, Last Stand, Second Wind, Unflinching, Attack Speed, Adaptive Force, and your choice of a defensive rune. From there, build Berserker's Greed, Gale Force, Navori Quake Blades, Infinity Edge, Phantom Dancer, and a Sorelda's Grudge. The slow from Sorelda's will often be more valuable than Giant Slayer's passive from Lord Dominix, as you already hit max crit chance and you can instead get out more ability haste and added utility. That wraps up the mid lane, and once again, we put the builds up on the screen for you. Check them out, take notes, and let's go ahead and talk about the bot lane builds next. First up is a build for Kogma. Slowly but surely, his time is coming. A lot of the best marksmen have been getting nerfed over the past few patches, while Kogma has received nothing but buffs. As small as they are, eventually the meta is bound to favor him. He's outshined by other hyper carries, but both Tristana and Jinx are a little bit weaker than before. Hail of Blades was nerfed, and Jinx has been receiving direct changes. For runes, run Lethal Tempo, Presence of Mind, Legend Bloodline, Cut Down, Taste of Blood, Ravenous Hunter, Attack Speed, Adaptive Force, and your choice of a defensive rune. For items, you'll build Wit's End, Berserker's Grief, Immortal Shield Boat, Randuin's Omen, Rage Blade, and a Guardian Angel. Randuin's received a recent buff, and including it in your build provides flat damage reduction as well as some extra breathing room. This item is especially useful when melee champions do manage to get in range. It's almost inevitable. Kogma is so immobile that when they do get in range, you can slow them down with Randuin's Omen and not only kite them, but reduce their damage output. The short 60 second cooldown on the item also makes it a great last resort, one you have access to for basically every fight. Next up, we have Irelia Bottom. She is beginning to gain a lot of popularity as well. Maybe she's been in the wrong role for this whole season. Her high mobility and damage output allow her to apply heavy pressure onto marksmen who typically just want to keep their distance. Especially when laning with another support with Lockdown, Irelia is a huge threat. The chain CC alongside the fact that Irelia can dash to the same target up to three times means that even Summoner Flash won't be enough to keep her opponent safe. For runes, run Conqueror, Triumph, Legend Tenacity, Last Stand, Magical Footwork, Cosmic Insight, Attack Speed, Adaptive Force, and your choice of a defensive rune. For her items, build Blade of the Rune King, Defensive Boots, Immortal Shield Boat, Ginsu's Rage Blade, Death Stance, and a Guardian Angel. Ginsu's may seem like an odd buy, but you typically don't rely on crit when playing Irelia anyway. Converting Immortal Shield Boat's crit chance to flat on hit damage makes it so no stats go to waste. You gain access to the Lifeline Shield, and obviously, the other stats the item provides are also great on Irelia. Gensu's phantom hit effect is insanely strong with Irelia's passive, Blade of the Rune King, and its own on hit damage. They'll be wrapping up the bot lane, so like always, we put the builds on the screen for you. Check them out. The Irelia build is super fun, so go ahead and give that one a try in a normal game if you're curious. Alright, let's wrap this all up with supports. 
Braum has been the target of many buffs this season. Unfortunately, he's had a pretty hard time, since he hasn't been able to get much out of the item changes this season. Aggressive melee supports have always been the go-to picks, and players have chosen to favor range supports in cases where they just want to play more of a protective role. That could all change with this build, however. For runes, you'll be running Halo Blades, Cheap Shot, Zombie Ward, Relentless Hunter, Cosmic Insight, Minion Dematerializer, Ability Haste, and Double Defensive Runes. Halo Blades allows you to quickly apply your sun onto the target. Once you land your Q slow, or even if the opponent walks up too far aggressively, you can punish them and nearly instant stun. Even in the late game, this rune is actually very functional. That instant stun means that you can quickly lock down the enemy that's trying to dive your teammate. If you're nearby, land a Q and quickly apply the triple auto attack to stop enemies in their tracks. For the items, you'll build Steel Shoulder Guards, Defensive Boots, Sorelia's Battle Song, Zeke's Convergence, Knight's Vow, and Redemption. Shirelia's, if finished early, can help you apply some more pressure in lane as well. The bonus movement speed can allow you to quickly catch up to an enemy, but it can obviously be used offensively to help you and your team retreat as well. The final support that we have is for Lysandra, the Ice Cold Witch, which is very reminiscent of my last relationship. With the amount of crowd control that she has, it's no surprise that she's seen some play in the bottom lane. This build allows you to take the role as a secondary damage dealer as well as a crowd control bot. Whether you need to initiate a fight or sit back and peel for your carry, you have the tools to do both. For runes, run Aftershock, Font of Life, Bone Plating, Revitalize, Hexaclash, Traption, Double Adaptive Force, and your choice of a defensive rune. Aftershock combined with Bone Plating is crucial. Without them, support Lysandra is too squishy to make use out of her crowd control. The short range on her W and R means that she has to get up close and exposing herself without extra defensive stats is rather risky. Hexic Flash Traption is a great tool to help you initiate fights as well. Her E provides great range, but is clearly telegraphed as a trade-off. This inevitably makes Lysandra reliant on Flash for guaranteed engages, and running Hex Flash allows you to start fights more frequently. For the items, build Spell Thieves, Lucidity, Sonya's Hourglass, Locket of Iron Solari, Abyssal Mask, and a Chemtech Putrefire. You can build the Chemtech Putrefire earlier if you need the healing reduction fast. Anyway, that concludes our builds, and to finish it all up, we put the support builds up one last time for you to check it out. Thank you guys for watching the video, and I really hope you enjoyed it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, as I'd love to actually read them. Also, check out the description where we have a link in our Discord. Come check it out. It'd be great to have you be part of the community. And until next time, as usual, stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.